when Dom was given the chance to test drive the new Subaru Forester up north, we all thought it would be a good excuse to take it out on our proper Field Sports Britain outing. So instead of going for a pleasant drive in the country with lines like, if this car were a sheep, it would be producing knitted woolly jumpers, we're taking it off the beaten track onto a beaten up farm to reach the start of a hill stalking day in the Lake District. We're after a cull red stag with our old friend Cumbrian deer stalker Jonathan Standing. First, Dom needs to get his rifle zeroed. Shooting up here is not recommended for the novice. The strong crosswinds are a big problem and, although Dom has stalked with Jonathan for years, both of them need to know the rifle is shooting true. So as always, when the rifle's been in the back of the car and we've just got here, um, just want to make sure that the rifle's still on zero. So Jonathan's brought us out to, to check that we can, uh, we can still hit the paper and uh, then makes you a bit more confident when we do go out on the hill that hopefully the rifle's doing its thing and any mistakes are down to me and not down to a problem with the gun. So we're just going to have three shots and uh, just hopefully make sure that everything's okay. We'll leave them to it and back to the Forester. At its launch back in 1997, you may recall it found favour with farmers and farmers' wives, husbands and live-in lovers alike. These days, everyone needs a car like this just to survive the potholes. But has this tough old boot, now in its fourth generation, gone soft? In many ways, the original Subaru Forester came to define what we now call the crossover genre. Crossover, it's not quite a car, it's not quite a proper off-roader. It's somewhere between the two. It's a pumped-up estate car. And in the case of the Forester, it was tough, it was reliable, it had a proper four-wheel drive system, it was built to take punishment, and it found favour with farmers and families all over the world. Case in point, this is David the cameraman's car. It's led a very tough life, chasing Field Sports Britain stories all around the UK. He's got kids, it's been dealt with as a farm vehicle, and it's survived. It's still going strong, 135,000 miles, still great. But the market's changed, it's moved on. Crossover vehicles are not a rarity anymore. They are everywhere, from urban vehicles all the way through to slightly more serious stuff. So the new Subaru Forester has got a much tougher segment in which to compete. And this is it. As you can see, just looking at the two together, it's much taller, it's much chunkier, it's got much more road presence. It's got the new kind of Subaru corporate face, if you like, with the big badge, big lights, plenty of ride height. It's also demanding to have a lot more luxury in this sector. So whereas before you could get away with a vehicle that was quite utilitarian, these days it needs to have sat nav, it needs to have electrics, it needs to have controls on the steering wheels, it needs to have iPod connectivity. Another big change for this generation of Forester is that it's now got the next generation of the Boxer diesel engine. The original Forester, petrol only. Yes, you can have a turbo, which is great fun, but you couldn't have a diesel. This does, it's a flat fourth configuration, as Subaru made famous, much more efficient, much smoother, and it means that it's more practical as a family proposition. The country up here is just beautiful, better viewed on foot than in a vehicle. The last time we were here was with American huntress Pam Zeitz. Dom and Jonathan scan the hillside and the dots in the distance do appear to be deer. They aren't going to come to us, so we've got to go to them. I think Jonathan's taken one look at that hill and one look at my deer belly and he, he doesn't fancy my chances very much, so we're going to head out onto the, onto the open hill and, and just have a scan around and see what we can see. Um, but sadly, even with the, for, the forester's ability, it's not going to make it up there, so we need something a little bit more serious. The conditions are blowy, to say the least. The stalking teams stop and scan as they ascend. There's no point heading off blindly. Yeah, it's moving across the face. It's moving across the face. Yesterday was t-shirt weather back down south and uh, we seem to have travelled back about four months and it feels like December and January again up here. There's still a bit of snow on the ground but the main concern is this wind is absolutely howling in over the tops and where it's going up and down the valleys it's hard to predict exactly which direction it's going to blow in where the deer are. Um, but we've picked up another group, they're directly opposite us and they're, they're kind of moving along the face trying to keep in, in a bit of shelter so I'm just going to monitor them and see where they end up. They need to spot a target and work towards it as stealthily as they can. Eventually Jonathan finds some likely customers. A slight movement catches his eye and more careful study reveals a herd of eight animals. This is where the fun begins and where careful preparation for this environment is vital. Not just fitness but kit too. 
They crawl, they walk, they try and get a breath. They crawl some more and more. Once you're wet, you're wet, and you just get on with it. Jonathan is fantastic at reading the deer, knowing when to move his clients, when to hold. I more like sausage rolls, I think. Normally, when I'm that low to the ground, I'm asleep. After 45 minutes, the first chance of a shot is at a young red stag calf, but they bounce over the ridge. Jonathan is now keener than ever to get onto these animals as one of the hinds looks sick. Even though the hind season is over, many have perished with the severe winter and he wants her shot. This time Dom is in position and happy. <laughs> That's the exit, isn't it? Oh, that's the exit. The 235 metre shot strikes the hind well and a heart shot puts her down. On closer inspection, Jonathan knows he's made the right call. We picked this hind out because it was the poorest one in the herd and now we've shot it. We can see why there's no flesh on its back at all. Its backbone's showing right along, so it was a, it's a good one to take. It is, yeah. Probably might even die in the next couple of weeks, might this. It's just made it through the winter. You so say this, where we've had this prolonged cold spell through, yeah. through into March, it, it, it's put extra pressure on them because this has. is the time of year when they're vulnerable, isn't it? It is, and often they don't die in the winter, they'll die when the spring comes. Uh, yeah, they do, you know. Yep, this is when you get your losses this, this time of year. All that needs to be done now is get her back to the Polaris, which is a very long way away. However, that's not the end of Dom's day. A single red hind with an injured leg gets up on the walk back to the cars. Jonathan asks Dom to get onto her. It wasn't moving very well at all, was it? She's down, and on closer inspection she has a broken leg, but incredibly is a far healthier looking animal than the first. It was, it was on its own, it got up out of these reeds, and it just didn't want to go anywhere, Jonathan, did it? No. Which is, you know, normally they see you, well, as we know from earlier, as soon as they catch any sight of you, they want to be away. Yeah. Whereas this, this one just, just didn't, and he stood there looking and looking, and, you know, Jonathan... Jonathan, as soon as he saw it moving, you could see that something went right and it's got a bad break to the front leg. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to go up the hill, didn't want to get away, stood there looking and looking and unfortunately that gave us time to get the rifle out and, uh, and get a shot in it. Yeah. Even, even having said that, look at the size of the beast and the condition of it compared to the other one that we shot earlier. You know, this is it's in much better physical nick. Obviously it's worrying when you see one like that on its own, not wanting to move, so. What a stalk. Not what we'd hoped, but stalking up here is a different beast for all sorts of reasons. As always, welfare, welfare of the animals the first. is paramount, it is, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you may be after one thing, but um, something else dictates to you uh, a different plan for the day, which we did today, really. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just have to wait another time to get my stag. You will, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the day didn't go as we planned, you know, yeah. Yeah, but it, it turned out a good day in the end, really. We've stopped any animals suffering on the hill yeah. uh, which is which is good all everyone needs to do now is dry off and get some shots of the subaru before it gets too late we've been on the hill far longer than expected yes the new subaru forester has to compete with the likes of the kashkais the cougars and the tiguans of this world yes they also have good ground clearance and some even have four-wheel drive but it's like comparing hill stalking for reds with woodland stalking for muntjac. The new soft raiders potter, whereas the forester still has the core strength to stride. <laughs>